Midnight Charlie Man, Midnight Quarter, Midnight Song, Patrick here, Patrick Kieran. Yeah, just uh, thinking about things and uh, yes, having a having a reminisce. I was uh, thinking about some things. I was reminiscing. I was reminiscing. I'm very excited today. Uh, it's very good. As I dragged the, as I dragged the chains of yesterday. As I dragged the chains of yesterday. Midnight Charlie Man, Midnight Charlie Man! Midnight Charlie Man! Midnight Charlie Man! Yes, oh yeah, Midnight Charlie Man, oh yeah, Midnight Charlie Man. Ah, I was remembering Seagull Sydney. Remember Seagull Sydney, Darling Harbour? It, it opened in 1996. I was part of the opening crew. I was right off, right operator at Seagull Sydney, Darling Harbour. 96, I left there late 98. It can be very wise to check the actual footage uh, 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 filmed because sometimes I don't press record properly. So I just did an introduction and I hadn't pressed record. Uh, I left Sega World in August of 1998 and I had a new job by the September. So uh, I moved on very quickly. I had, a I had a new job within three weeks actually. And I couldn't, over the years, it's become a vague, but I, and, I, and I had forgotten uh, exactly when I left there. But I resigned from Sega. I left Sega World in uh, the August of 1998, and, and I just remember it because they, they said to us, they said to us, now listen. They said to us, they said, they said, they said this is a business. We're running a business here. There's not a charity. They said because you had you had the you had the the ride passes, the the, the, the ride the, the the tokens. The when you came into the park. You were given a card, and you could put all these points on it to go on all the rides. And our supervisors would come around to us, and they'd say, "Very important, make sure. Okay, we're not running a charity here. This is a business. We're here to make money. Some of you guys, uh, it, it, someone, someone comes to the ride and says, oh, you know, look, I'm a couple of points short. I've, I've, I've done all the rides. I'm a couple of points short. And we're supposed to say, well, you're going to get back to the ticketing machine.'" And you've got to top up your card and then you can go on. Well, they said, you know, some of you aren't doing that. You've got to make sure that they go back. Even if, if they're a point or two short, they must go back to the ticketing machine. They must put another $10 in their card. And then, they can, and, 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 then when, and then when they come back to you, you let them ride. Well, if a person came up to me, it came, and, and, and also the, 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 some of the other people I work with there, some of them who weren't a part of the A crowd, was never part of the A crowd, part of the Z crowd, and 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 because the aircraft were a bit, you know, bit. and uh, the uh, we can't be having a child. Hey, going on? Yeah, hey, don't say. What's this? What's this all about? I'd, and they'd say, Oh, look, they said, look, we've, we've we've just we've just spent a few hours in the park. We've just gone all the rides. This is the last one. We don't have enough tokens. We, we, we don't actually have enough tokens in our car. We don't have enough points in our car. I'd be like, I, I didn't. I, I didn't care. If, if they come up to me and they said, "Look, mate," uh, uh, they say, "I'd really like to go on this. I don't have enough. I don't have enough points up to my car." I said, "Look, just don't worry about it. Just come on, come on the ride. Come on the ride." I didn't care. I let them on, and and uh, it was close enough to 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 be honest. It was close enough to a charity. It was a, a, an amusement park. People would go there to enjoy themselves, to have fun, and uh, very good. I. Uh, Oh, there was many people, you know, they, they, they'd come up, to, as I said, they'd come up to me and they, you know, we'd have a bit of a chat and they'd say, what's all this right about? Because it was Rail Chase, Magic Motion, Ghost Hunters, Aquanova, AS1, Mad Bazooka. Mad Bazooka has to be very little time on that, very, very little time. And there was, what else was there? Mad Baz. And uh, sort of that bears VR one, and I spent countless hours on Aquanova. I spent countless hours on Ghost Hunters and Magic Motion, and maybe did about five shifts all up on Mad Bazooka. I didn't really, oh, I didn't really like. Uh, I, look, I, I, did, I didn't, I couldn't stand Mad Bazooka. I didn't really like it. I, it was more like a dodging car thing. You shoot the balls out of the thing at the front, and I didn't really like it. But. I've had many conversations, and people would come up to me, and they'd say, "I only have a certain amount of points left on my card," and I was, and and, and it was all the, there's those huge crowds, especially during school holidays, 
you know, you get a, 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 get a group of people coming up and one, one, one of them says, we really want to come on this, but we've, we don't have enough things left. And I say, give me a card, give me a card. They give me the card. And I do like, eh, eh, eh. all right, done, you're done. And I do that. The particular guy that I work with, Doug, he was, he was older than me, he had a lot of life experience. And, and one, one, one day, uh, uh, this chap started talking to him at rail trains and they're having a chat and all that and you know and, and Doug says, uh, wanna have a go? He goes, Oh, I don't have enough tokens, mate. He says, oh, no, come on, come on, have a go. He says, Yeah, yeah, come on. <sighs> because it was about close enough to a carriage you can get. The place eventually. Sega World Sydney also I had a very good time working at Sega World Sydney. It was one of the best fun jobs I ever had. Sega I have actually very good memories of the place. I had a great time there. And uh I had a very good time there. Very, I have actually very fond memories of it. It was, it was very, it was very good. I uh, started off. Uh, I think I started off. Started off as a casual or something, or part time, and eventually went full time there. It was very. Uh, Sega World Sydney. Those were the good old days. They, they, they and the, the thing is, eventually, they eventually had once that place once it shut down the Sega World, they eventually had raves there. I think they eventually started having raves there, and then I think it was eventually demolished around 2000 and 2004. I think it was eventually demolished. It's a little bit sad that it's not there anymore, just in the fact that uh, you know it did work there, but it, just the, the good old days, and it was actually quite attractive. And then they built the big uh, Commonwealth Bank site there, and that's not so attractive. Yeah, come up and. Say, hey, what's this all about? You tell me about this and you know, have a bit of a chat. And I met all sorts of people from different walks of, I met all sorts of different people. Uh, well, I met all different people. I, I, I met different people from all different walks of life, and, and they would uh, say, oh, let's say, uh, someone would say, oh, I'd really like to have a go on this, but I don't have enough points in my card, so it's kind of kind of. You just, you, just take, you just give me a card, give me a card. I used to talk a little differently back then, but anyway. So, talking to people, I said, okay, so, hi, hey, hi, hey guys, how are you going? Uh, having, a, having a good day, yes. And they said, yeah, we've just, um, we really want to go on it, and this is a fair amount of people around. And they said, we, oh, yeah, we really want to go on this, but uh, we don't have enough, uh, we don't have enough things now. Uh, I said, I said I said, just give me a few minutes, just, just uh, chat for a few minutes, okay, uh, chat for a few minutes, uh, just, uh, 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 okay, great, good, thanks mate, no worries, uh, okay, uh, this is going to be a slice in, I went upstairs and I looked at the footage, Seagull, uh, Seagull World, uh, I said 96 before, it was the very end of 96, it was the, the training started in around about November or December of 96, I can't really remember now. And then, started in 96, uh, we, oh, Sega World opened in Darling Harbour in uh, early 97, and I remember leaving there in about October of 98. And I remember that we had a supervisor there, Brad, his name is Brad, and uh, he was in his... Uh, Oh, he was in his 50s at the time, maybe his 60s, and uh, he said, this is the easiest job you'll ever do, because I remember a bunch of us were on roll taste one day, you know, we were, we were being a bit late, oh, not being lazy, we just didn't have, there was no customers in the park, and he, he, he was approaching roll because roll taste was at the very end of Seagull World, the very end of the park, and we started pretending to do something, he said, oh, no, no, knock it off, knock it off, he goes, it's all right, and, and he says, it's all right. He said, I've done many jobs in my life. He said, this is it. And he said, this is the, the easiest job that you'll ever do. And after this job, and after you finish here, you'll just move. you just go back out into the real world and you know, do a regular thing or whatever. But he said, this is the easiest job you'll ever do. And he was, he was right in that. He was correct. I'm very correct in that. Aquanova was a ride that I spent. And then and when I said, uh, I mentioned an interjection. Well, this could be later in the video, but the thing was on Magic Motion. I spent countless hours on Aquanova. Uh, Aquanova was this underwater, underwater thing, underwater themed, and you, I don't know, lasted for about four minutes. And uh, I just feel sorry for some people because who went on the ride because during school holidays they might have waited 40 minutes to go on the ride, which lasted four, four or five minutes. 
but I operated that right. I operated Equinova a lot. I operated Equinova a lot, and uh, so much so, in an eight-hour shift, that I would, when I would go home and go to sleep, uh, I think I would dream about Equinova. My favourite ride to operate at Sega was uh, I enjoyed Magic Motion. Enjoyed, I enjoyed Magic Motion. Actually, enjoyed being on rail chase, but uh, Magic Motion was good because I could operate and be out the front. So if I didn't want to speak to people for a while, I'd just go and operate. If I wanted to stretch my legs, to go out the front and to socialise with people. And then, and then, and then the, I mean, some days there might be ten people in the park, and during school holidays might be two thousand people in the park, and it was it all depended. Okay, something very important to mention. Uh, put this bag out of the way. This is, this is a slice in. Something very important to mention. I am not in the theme parks. I happened to be offered a job in one at SeaWorld. Sea I was offered a job. I've never been a fan of theme parks. I've never been excited to go to a theme park. I'm, I was offered a job at one. I was grateful for that position. I had fun there. I'm not a fan of theme parks. And one thing that we were constantly asked uh, by people that would come into the park uh, and say, do you go on the ride? I'll be like, this is the thing. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, because during training, because well, before Sega World opened, there was about two months, we had two months of training before Sega World opened to the public. And during that training, which was five days a week, we constantly had went on the rides. Well, we were trained to operate them. We'd go on them. And so, we did that for all the rides. We we, we we were in there for two months before I opened to the public. We all went on the rides, uh, enough to drive us bonkers. I had to question our sanity. And so my, over and over and over and over again during the day to, to, to understand how the rides worked and to operate them and all the different safety procedures that go along with that. And so we would, so much so that we would go home to sleep, I would dream that I was still there. So. Yes, I did go on the rides during training. Oh my gosh, that was a lot. Yes, especially for someone who's not really into theme parks. I'm not real. I enjoyed talking to the people. Uh, I enjoyed socialising with all the, the guests that came into the park. I enjoyed that aspect. I also enjoyed operating, but I was never a fanatic. I was never overly passionate about it. Uh, one one thing that about Sega World is it had the big TV screen. Uh, it was down the other end of the park, next to Aquanova, just outside Aquanova, and a massive TV screen. You just play a lot of music on that. Uh, I was about to say the classic hits of the 80s, but in the 90s, the 80s weren't classic yet. But had the big TV screen, they used to play a lot of music, and all sorts of things like that. No, not a fan of rides, I'm not a fan of theme parks. I rushed, I'm out of breath because I rushed, I was upstairs in the lounge room, and I just remembered one more thing to say, so I rushed back down here to do this. Uh, and after training and finished, I never went on them ever again. Don't really feel the need to go on them when you're actually operating or, or when you're there. So, so there and so no, no, I didn't, no, 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 no. Supervisor Brad, okay, Brad, great guy for a story because he had a lot of, done a lot of different things in his life and he'd tell us stories and or, you know, just tell, tell stories to us and, and, and uh, just have a casual chat. He, he he didn't say, what are you doing? Get a room in your hand, get to work. He'd say, he'd, he'd walk up to the ride and he'd say, hey, go. hey you guys going, how you going fellas, how you going, how you doing? And uh, had a lot of, uh, when he'd come up to my ride, say, hey, Patrick, how you going? How's it going today? And I'd have a bit of a chat with him. He, he's a very good guy that way. He was very relaxed about things. He didn't really take the place too seriously. He just uh, he enjoyed he he enjoyed working there, and uh, he he was uh, he was always he was always good for a chat for a story, and uh, he would say oh yeah one day you're back out into the real world, <laughs> you yeah, know Brad was good, very interesting person. Okay, Supervisor Ben, Supervisor Ben, I, Supervisor Ben was very good to me very good. He was good to everybody. And uh, he was about he was about my age at the time. Perhaps maybe a couple of could have been a year younger than me, perhaps a year older than me. Good guy. Probably the most relaxed person in the park. 
and uh, he was a very always very good to me. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, so this is a uh, this is a big huge one. This is a big huge one. Um, vital detail, actually, because I said uh, so. I said before the training was uh, five days a week, eight hours a day. It was not actually. It was not eight hours a day. What happened was they got us in about four days a week, four to five days a week for about four hours of training. Uh, it's so vague now. Four to five hours of training, and I actually started my training. I actually started my training on Aquanova. Uh, Aquanova. We're all assigned a particular right because then. The way they did it, they just divided us all up. Some people were at the, center, the other end of the park. I was on Aquanova and AS1. And so it's been four to five, could have been six hours, I'm fairly certain it was about four to five hour shifts. I had four to five hour shifts on Aquanova. Aquanova, oh, Aquanova, oh. Aquanova. And, uh, and, uh, so that was some intense training on Aquanova, and uh, and it was AS1, and so trained on very specific rides. And so when the park opened, the park opened, and so I spent that first six weeks on Aquanova, operating Aquanova for eight hours per day, and. Uh, they can get you after a while operating Aquanova for eight hours a day, and spending some time spending some time outside the ride, the front of the ride, speaking with the guests, interacting with the guests, or operating. And, and, and sometimes, like after an hour, like if someone's operating the ride, they'd be like, they'd be like, can, can you operate? Can you please operate? Please, please, please. please. Okay, so what happened then was I uh, ran out of memory because I didn't delete enough files before. I've been on Aquanova for, I've been on Aquanova for, uh, well, I've been operating for two months, about two months straight. I remember one day a uh, supervisor comes up to me. I don't remember if it was Brad or if it was Ben. And he says, Pat, Patrick, he says, okay, he says, uh, so you don't have to operate Aquan you don't have to operate Aquanova forever. You're not stuck on Aquanova. <laughs> so far, so far. And he said, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get you off here. We're gonna cross train you. You're, you're doing a fantastic job. You're, you're not, you're not, you're not stuck on Aquanova forever, forever. So far. And uh, <laughs> and and uh, so you're uh, you're not stuck on this and uh, so far. And uh, he said, all right, Pat. He said, he said, all right, Pat. You know, you're not stuck on that one over. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not stuck. So far. And uh, he said, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get you off here. We 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 haven't forgotten about you. Yet. And because uh, that one over was a bit rigorous. It. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't really funny at the time. It definitely was not funny at the time. I think the most, most endurance-wise, like if you had, if, if if you know if you had to work and you're hungover or something, uh, AS1 was an unfortunate ride to get stuck on for a shift because there wasn't much to it. It was a console, it was a stairs capsule operating panel. Four minutes. That's it. Literally, like literally, there's no way to go. And so it's a bit, uh, that's the nice one. Could be a bit unfortunate to be on. <laughs> oh yes, it's funny now. <laughs> and so I was sent up to. Uh, I would have been sent up to Ghost Hunters. I can't remember which one I was cross trained on first. And yeah, went up to Ghost Hunters, learned all about Ghost Hunters. Went up to Ghost Hunters, learned all about Ghost Hunters, and we actually got trained on rail, uh, rail Chase and Magic Motion. That took a while. That took uh, that took a while. It took a couple of months, but uh, the first first uh, first three months I was in the park. I was Aquanova, Aquanova, Safa, do Safa, and and uh, um, yeah, and uh, what, what else? Was there anything else? Uh, yeah, just that, uh, because what happened when you'd go into Aquanova and there was these seats and it was like a space shuttle thing and then you had the big screen and, the, and you went through these tunnels or whatever and there was like a monster underwater creature. It was like, like there was like an underwater creature and we had to add dialogue to it. There was a specific script when we started, but once we got the hang of things, we just made up our own thing. And I think in the morning, I 
I think, I think in the periods down the track my life got completely over, I didn't say anything. Sometimes I just wouldn't say anything. But we added our, we added dialogue to that. The majority of the time we added dialogue to it. And uh, many people did not like to operate Equinova. You know, like, they'd say, oh, they'd, they'd say, did, have you done many hours on this? I'd like, well, when the park opened, this is what I was trained on. I was trained on this ride. And then for the first two months, this is what they're like, oh, you did this for two months? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, so far. And, um, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll get to you a bit if you're, if you're doing it continuously. Uh, it's partly exciting. Uh, yeah. Uh. Now, a good ride to be on. A really good ride to be on if you want to socialise. If you wanted to socialise, ghost hunters. Because it's just the platform. And you put people on the ride, put people on the ride that way. So, facing the ride, you get the console, put people on, and then people up. A light and uh, big, you know, especially on days when there was off peak days when there was no one in the park, you just talk for hours, you just converse for hours on the ride, which I did. And if you're on, usually, I was on a ride with someone I, uh, I, I liked and that, that I got along well with, and uh, that's the thing about the park is that they, they would assign people to ride to, you'd be on the ride with a friend who's someone who you get along with. Very rarely you'd be put on with someone you didn't get along with. And, uh, and, uh, so ghost hunters talk for hours. Talk for hours. And, uh, talk for hours. Now, I do remember my last day. I actually I do remember my last day there. I was, I don't know where I spent the first half of the day, but the second half of the day, at the end of my shift, I was at Rail Chase. And I remember came to my the end of my shift and I was on the ride with two people uh, work friends that like that I knew and got along with and uh and one of them must have said, That's it Pat, you're done. That's it. So uh my um my last shift on uh, my last shift on rail chase, uh, I don't remember too much about it. Uh, standard shift. Uh, I got to the end of my shift and I think a couple of my workmates, people I was working with, said, uh, okay, that's it, you, 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 you're finished, Pat, you're done, that's it, it's, it's it, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, I said farewell to them. I said, I said farewell to them, and I said, all right, and I said, uh, yep, yeah, uh, I said farewell, and then uh, my replacement turned up. Probably a supervisor turned up because it usually would have happened at the end of the shift. Can't remember who, it, can't remember who that was. And uh, my replacement turned up, made my exit, and then uh, made my way to the other end of the park. Probably spoke to a few people along along the way who were still on their shift and who I said goodbye to, and they probably wished me well. It's all a blur. It's very blurry now, but that probably when all the streamers came down there, there was no streamers. But um, all the confetti, there was no confetti. Probably spoke to a few people to, on the way up toward the exit before going downstairs. That's about it. That's, that's it. And yeah, and that, that was it. And uh, then I went downstairs. Well, I remember what happened was I, I had uh, farewell drinks at One World Sport and uh, had a good turn up. And a, few, a group of us were down there, uh, the, all, the, all, all the best people I knew there, and I had, uh, had my farewell drinks. And that was very good. And, uh, yeah, that was it. It was, it was finished. It was finished. Okay, so I was going to, I was, uh, Okay, so I was, I was um, operating. I was operating Equinova, and I, I, I just fi finished putting some people through, and I opened the exit door. And the people are walking out, and so I come out of Equinova, and who passes me? Damien the Reveridge. Damien the Reveridge walks this way. She's been in the park for some reason, so she walks this way. I'm like, oh, I said, oh, I said, I said, hi. She's like, hello, 
the possum? And 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 and, and, and I'm like, oh, and and and, uh, and and that was a fun moment. And and uh, and all just like literally like 20 minutes later, I was downstairs in the staff outside, and because as I said, there's a big staff area, and I was outside where people used to have a smoke. I don't smoke, but I would hang out there anyway in the staff area. And David Neverbridge hailed hailed a taxi and got in the taxi. And uh, uh, and uh, yeah, but they met them. And uh, that was cool. Ah, that's right. I think I was going to mention this that when I uh, oh, that's right. When I moved on from Seagull World in my new job, about four, the first four days of my new job after leaving Seagull World, I was like, oh, what the hell have I done? What have I done? And then after well, like about day six, maybe about day five or six of my new job, I thought, yeah, no, this is good. This is this is perfectly good because Sega World Sydney was limited. I wasn't being respected there. Toward the end, I was not being respected, and uh, they weren't doing me good. And I moved on now, and uh, it was a regular job, and. Uh, I, uh, not that Sega World wasn't a regular job, it just happened to be an amusement park, but I uh, settled in fairly. Oh, I, had a, I had a few days of anxiety and I was like, no, no, this is, this is good. And I was treated, the, my, new, my new boss got along with him, it was just me and him, just me and him, and we got along very well. I digress. And uh, he treated me quite well. And because I'd been, I'd, I'd, I'd been in the rhythm of working for, of, of working about five days a week, and uh, because when I started off at Sega World, I was actually uh, part time or casual, could be in part time, and but that may have involved, like that was that could have involved five shifts a week, and then and, and, and when the park was just getting started up, you could take as many shifts as you wanted, and so I do remember a certain point in time that I was doing about six days a week there. There was some gung ho workaholics there and they did stuff like that seven days a week and, and, and they're like yeah and, and, and I'm like I really love my days off yeah they they they, they but I wasn't ever <laughs> uh, I was never that enthusiastic I was never that keen I enjoyed my two days off but however there was some periods when I did six days a week there some periods. I always liked my days off. And uh, and so, um, yes, I was used to that. Oh, that's right. Now, I said before I wasn't part of the A crowd. Uh, I was part of the Z crowd. Um, I was my own A crowd. I was my, I was my own. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. I was my own A crowd. That's right. Uh, yes. I, I left Sega World, I, I mean I didn't, I, I think I might have rested for about two days and then I, I hit the papers and I went for some interviews, got the new job. Uh, with the new job, after I left Sega World, I was there for, I was there for about six months, the six months, I eventually moved on from there as well. So, uh, um, yeah, I actually, did, as I said, I did not look back. And then I kind of put Sega World out of my mind. I put it on out of my mind for about a decade. And you know, people say, Pat Romney used to work at Sega World. I was like, oh, yes. Right operator, yes. Because I, I just moved on with life. Just moved on with life. And uh, just adding quickly that 1999 and 2000 were very interesting years. Uh, and. Uh, was, uh, I think it was a year where my personality uh, pro progressed. I, I became liberated. I, I uh, 
in the Great of Pneumonia. A very interesting year. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so, uh, everything wasn't smooth sailing at Seagull Rock, uh, but I have chosen to remember, as a, remember it as a, a positive experience. Okay, so, it was, it was very complicated at Seagull Rock. It wasn't all smooth. The camera actually just ran out of memory. The camera just had a rem memory as I, as I was in mid-sentence. Okay, so... Seeing as I'm talking about Seagerwald, I'm not going to play the fool. I won't play the fool because it was th I, 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 I was not treated so well. At, uh, I have I, I remember back to Seagerwald occasionally. I talk about it. I talk about it occasionally. It's one of the most fun jobs I ever had. I'm not going to play the fool though. And there was this guy that came along toward the end, about six months toward the end, and. I had to trigger my memory. I had to think. I was just upstairs in the lounge. I was just upstairs in the lounge room, and I, and I, and 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 it was on my mind. The head of rides left, and a new guy came in, and I finally remembered his name. Okay, so uh, I was um, I was certain. I thought that I was certain about what this guy's name was, but it's been many years, and so I actually don't remember what his name was. Uh, so he, he was the new guy, he, he was the uh, the new head of rides guy, he was the new head of rides, the new guy. And uh, apparently I had said a couple of things to a ride, to a ride supervisor, I probably had said a couple of things, uh, mainly standing up for myself. And you didn't stand up for yourself in, the, in that place, you get walked all over, you don't stand up for yourself in general, you get walked all over. And and uh, and uh, th this guy reprimanded me and sent me to come up to his office. And I went up to his office and and, and I knew I was on thin ice. And um, th to th th this guy, this uh, this this new head of rides guy, real real ball breaker. This guy. I didn't want the job. I needed the job. I needed the job. I didn't want the job. I needed the job, and fuck you, and your, your bullshit, and, and uh, the way you spoke to me that morning, with your, with your bullshit. With your bullshit. With your bullshit. With your bullshit. With your bullshit that morning. And 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 you know, with your with your reverse psychology. Fuck you. And uh, uh, you know, it takes two to tango. Should have stood. Well, should have, could have, would have that day. There's certain. Th could have just walked, or walked, or got up and walked out. But for some particular reason, I felt like I needed to stay at Seagull longer. And so, uh, and then that day he's looking at me, and he, he's uh, waiting for me to you know, give in. And I said, oh, no, I, 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 uh, I didn't want the job, I needed it. And uh, and uh, this new this new head of rides guy, real ball breaker. This guy, real ball breaker, real ball breaker, real ball breaker. And I played the fool. I played it. And uh, perhaps I shouldn't have done that. Uh, it wasn't all fun and games uh, at Sega. And there were people that weren't on my side. There were people that attempted to bring me down. I uh, had my small group of uh, acquaintances. I had my small group of acquaintances and friends. Actually, in, in fact, I know all the best people in the park. 
It was a big mixture of people, big mix of people. But, but yeah, but yeah, the, it, it came. The Sega world came with its challenges, and I had to stand up for myself, and did stand up for myself, and presented. I uh, presented a lot of attitude at the time. Presented a lot of attitude, and that was out of uh, survival. I carried my resignation around in my pocket with me for two months before I finally. I, I, hand, I handed it in, and, and, and I, handed, I handed it in, and um, yeah, yeah, I did that, and I played the fool with certain people, and uh, you know, it was ostracized, the, the, the politics and the hierarchy of the place became, it just became so ridiculous that I'd had enough. And there are a lot of people who are complaining there, a great deal of people who are complaining, and I just thought, no, I'm done, I've had it. And uh, got out of there. And actually, I felt greatly I felt greatly relieved when I resigned. Actually, I, I resigned and got on with life. I just, well, let's moved on. I, I, I happily moved on. Uh, yeah, I happily moved on. I was I was there for as long as I was there for as long as I needed to be there for. And I met some very interesting people while I was there, and and uh, and the thing is now these days I look I, I I remember the people I remember the people that uh, remember the people that were good to me, and uh, also remember the people that weren't so good to me. So I will not play that. I will not play the fool on this. When I play the fool on it, I had something on my. I've had something on my. At Seagull, Seagull, the head of ride, the head of ride, that guy came in like a tourist. Came in like a tourist. Came in like a tourist. A very aggressive guy, no fun. And uh, the the guy that used to be head of rides for him. In regard of the older head of rides, the the the, the, the head of rides, the first head of rides, Mark. In regard of the first head of rides. He was a good guy. He was very good to everybody, fair to everyone. I did extend some attitude to him occasionally, but he was good. He was a good guy. He did eventually leave, and the new head of rides came in. New head of rides came in, and it was apples and oranges. And uh, yes, so uh, this this new head of rides guy rolled in. Have you fun? And uh, this was the situation. I said something to a ride supervisor that morning. It was in cheek. It was a bit of attitude because I, I did have attitude in that park to uh, to survive. And 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 and, and uh, you know the term dibba dobba, dibba dobba. Well, this guy became a dibba 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 dobba. This, 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 this ride operator. I just said right. I just said ride operator. I meant ride supervisor. And. Uh, uh, and this guy was younger than me, and uh, he was trying to be—he um, was trying to be uh, superior over me. And he wasn't superior—he wasn't superior to me. He was inferior to me, and he was pushing my buttons that morning. And I had quite enough, and I was under a bit of stress. He went straight to head of rides. Head of rides comes to me, my office now. I get up to his office, and I've been—I've been reflecting on this, and I was sort of thinking about it. And uh, I was really quite gullible at the time. I come up to his office, and he's like, and 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 and, uh, and uh, this is: do you want the job, or do you need the job? Now, and then he said, right, you're on probation. You you, you so much look at the right right up. You, you so much look at the supervisor the wrong way. You say the wrong thing to anyone. You just you you, you do the wrong thing. You're out. And he said a few more words, and he said a few more words, and he said, do you want the job or do you need the job? I said, I, 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 I told him I wanted the job, really gullible at the time. I'll look back, I reflect, I, I kind of regret that. I regret, I, I regret giving in and being gullible and playing the fool. I played the fool to him that day. And uh, I, uh, at the time, at the time, I thought, at the time, in my mind, I thought I needed the job. I thought I needed it. I didn't need the job. But at the time, I thought I did. 
and uh, I didn't need it. I didn't need that job. And in, in, in fact, uh, you were the ball breaker. You were the ball breaker that day. You were the big ball breaker that day. Big ball breaker. And, uh, and, 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 Uh, yeah, so what uh, what I should have done, what I should have said, I should have said, fuck you, don't you talk to me that way, I'm not taking this crap, don't you, the, the, these things you just said to me, they're not right, got up, and walked out, quit, and I said, and, and my younger self, my younger self says to, 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 to that guy, fuck you, and, and, uh, it's just, I guess I just uh, I hadn't thought about it a great deal over the years because I moved on to so many other different things, uh, and uh, just that uh, I moved on to other things. But I do occasionally think back to it. Then I just really thought about that situation, and I was tell uh, uh, your bullshit reverse psychology, your bullshit aggression, and and and. Uh, should have got, I should have said, fuck you, don't you talk to me like that, I'm out of here, go on, bye, because I didn't need the job, the job wasn't worth that, the job wasn't worth playing the fool for, I played the fool for a couple of months after that, the job wasn't worth it, that job was not worth it, and it's a little strange that I kept going for a couple more months, and then eventually handed my resignation in. You know, you know that, 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 that this head of rides guy came into the park like a tourist. He didn't really belong there. Came out like a tourist. He wasn't any fun. Okay, so, uh, so on the ride that day, on the ride that morning, the supervisor came in. He came in. He's a younger supervisor than me, and we didn't get along. We used to get along, but upon attaining supervisor status, he developed a superiority complex, and so by this point. Uh, yeah, we weren't getting along. Uh, he's, he's, talk, he's saying something to me. Uh, he's saying something to me. The morning. I said, "You're busting my balls. You're, you're busting my balls." He left. He just went straight to the head of rides. Head of rides says, "Get in my office." And I, and I, 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 I got, in, got into his office. He's like, "Is he busting your balls? Is he? Is he busting your balls?" Yeah, he was busting my balls. He was busting my balls. He was. He ball breaker. Oh, indeed, he was. Now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is a slice in. Now, I've got to, to explain something here. That uh, that particular morning, that, su that, that supervisor was saying, going through particular things, he would be saying particular things with me, and I had quite enough. I was under a lot of, uh, I was under a fair amount of stress, and previous to that, and after that, I, when I said, "You're busting my balls," I'd never actually said that to anyone before. I don't recall having actually made that statement before and and after that occasion I didn't use that phrase again for some odd reason that morning whilst conversing uh, with this guy with this with this guy I happened to say that I'd obviously heard people say that I'd never said it myself and in, in that particular moment that that morning for some reason, I said that, and I said I'd never said it since to anyone. I didn't really, I never used that terminology. But for some reason, in that moment, I just sort of, I just sort of I did that. And and, 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 and and even and after I said it, I'm like, after I said it, I thought to myself, probably could have said something different, but uh, nonetheless. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was irking me, and, uh, he, he was irking me, and I was having none of it, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, so, <laughs> that's what I said, and he ran off to hit a rides, and, he said, and, 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 uh, they tried to crush me that day, I was a bit naive back then, Colourable. Um, they never broke me. <laughs> Would 
with all the nitty gritty stuff. And yeah, so, so, uh, so, so, so uh, big asshole head of rides. And he said, all, he said, said those things to me. And, uh, and, 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 uh, what, 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 what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for being a big asshole that day. Sorry for being a big asshole to you that day and saying those, all those, those inappropriate things to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so who was the big asshole? Who was the big asshole that day? And, I could have handled that situation a lot better. Got up and walked. Uh, uh, looking back now, I partially regret that I stayed, kept, stayed on for an extra two months longer. Uh, th that job wasn't worth it. <laughs> and remarkably so, remarkable that I still have positive memories in regard to certain aspects of our uh, Sega world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't stand up for myself that morning. Only because I thought I needed the job. I thought I needed it. I didn't. He didn't break me. Okay, now, there was Kim and there was Linda, and they were park managers. And Kim was wonderful to me, very supportive of me. Linda was a nasty, she was a nasty piece of work. She had something wrong with her personality. She, not elite is the wrong word. She was um, ill-spirited, not very nice person, and she displayed this to me uh, not long after I joined SeaWorld. When she was with Kim on the floor, she'd be uh, looking at me with a particular eye. She'd be like, she'd just be. Uh, the, the malicious, the ill-intended, not very nice person. In her was just waiting to get out, and and, and so she'd be, oh, yeah, that's really nice. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's nice. And when she was on the floor with other people, she'd be nice to me. The moment that I saw her by myself, it was just me and her. And it was behind the scenes when it was. Uh, didn't call the storm. It was just. You had the exit door and then you had the staff quarters and, and we were cross paths walking up the stairs and uh, never spoke a word to me, always completely ignored me. I think that was her way of trying to, uh, I, I think she had a bit of pain in there, uh, pain in there. I, I, it, she was nasty, the malicious, not very nice person and uh, I think that was her way of trying to get rid of me out of Sega. But I stood my ground with her, and uh, I stood my ground because I wanted to be there. I only had to see her about once a week to once a fortnight. I think the malicious. Because uh, she didn't really walk up to, uh, go up to, walk up to the, the floor. When I say the floor, uh, it was just... That was the amusement park level where all the rides and the arcades were. Uh, just, we just, I think we call it the floor. She didn't go up there very often. Once a week, once a fortnight, she'd walk up there, uh, go up there. And uh, when she did, it was usually with Kim. And Kim always had good words for me. And Lin Linda was a. I don't remember her last name. Linda was she was not a nice person. And I actually mentioned this to a couple of uh, workmates at, at Sega, a couple of my mates. I, I, I said, because I used to speak a bit different. I, not, I don't speak the way I speak now. And I, and I said, there's a problem. There's a problem with Linda. They said, oh, they said, uh, yeah. And they, some of them said, oh, I know. And 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 they, and they said, you know what? Be better than it. Just just ignore it. Just it's not a great deal you can do. Well, there is, but is it worth it? And just they said, this place has a limited time, so if you can sort of just put up with it or ignore it, whatnot, whatever. And so I wouldn't let it get to me greatly. She wasn't on the floor that often. 
didn't have to see her that often. And, w and I used to match her on her too, just after her shot, it, I'd be just like... And, um, you know, occasionally, every now and uh, occasionally, every now and then, apart from doing this video, because I was, uh, 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 occasionally, every now and again, when I think of Seagabob, I occasionally, you know, I remember everyone, and, uh, Okay, so this has been on my mi this has been on my mind. I've had like nine out of ten anxiety last night uh, because of this. Because I was thinking about it all. I was thinking about what I'd said. Linda was not very nice to me. She treated me very badly. And I remember at orientation for Seagull, we had an orientation on a boat in Dark Harbour. We were all there, all of us, and Kim spoke first, I believe that Kim, I think that Kim spoke first, and Kim, and she spoke well, pleasantly, said some, somewhat about herself, and I thought she was cool, and then Linda got up to speak, and it was totally different, the vibe was totally different, Linda got up to speak, and the way she handled herself, and, 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 uh, and within about the first minute I was like, you're a bit obnoxious. Something was off. There was something off with her. And then that day, that day, not long after, in the staff area quarters, uh, I um, in the staff area quarters, I was walking down the stairs. I can't remember if I was walking down the stairs or up the stairs to go into the park itself. But she was walking. She could have been walking up the stairs, and I said. Oh, I said, hi Linda, and she gave me a disdainful, long look, and said nothing to me, and I was like, what the fuck was that all about? I said, what was that? And I went into a bit of shock, I'm like, what was that? And I couldn't work it out, and I didn't know how to deal with it, as when she was on the floor with Kim, and talking to me, and, and in fact, every time after that, she would come out on the floor with Kim, and every time after that, that they would speak to me, I'd, I'd tighten up, because I, I couldn't talk properly in front of her, I could, because she'd put on this friendly, as much as she could manage, uh, demeanour, when she was with Kim, when she was talking to me, but behind the scenes, and across parts of her alone, she always gave me, gave me a disdainful look, and that was, it made me feel very, it made me feel very uncomfortable, and it made everything awkward after that. I don't, I don't think Kim knew that, I don't think Kim knew that l about Linda's behaviour toward me, and I didn't know what to do, I didn't know how to deal with it at the time, I didn't know what to do about it, but it's, um, I dealt with it in my own way. Linda was not a very nice person. And uh, I, 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 the, the, all, all this has actually been reverberating in my head overnight because I've been analysing it somewhat, I've been thinking about it somewhat. Because I remember it was, and the staff quarters were huge, I mean, it was, it was a huge building, and you walk out the, it was called the stage exit door, you walked out the door, you went down the stairs, but there was a big, huge staff quarters, it was a very big building. But there was a lot of room in it, there was a lot of room in it. And one day Linda says to me, you've got sad eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm like, and that was particularly, uh, that grinded on my mind for a while, that did. I thought, yeah, I've got sadness, I've got sadness, but for you to point that out to me in like a spiteful, dark manner is inappropriate. And I, um... She, she like came from the devil's domain. Man, nasty. And I tolerated her for a time. But, uh, uh, as I said, I saw her once a fortnight, 
and, and, and every time she walked out onto the floor, my chest would tighten a bit. I'd stand strong, but I only had to tolerate her for a few minutes at a time, if that. And uh, when I uh, went out of Sig World, and that was a great relief. Because after I did move on from Seager World, uh, I think within a few weeks of leaving Seager World, I think I blocked it. I, I kind of, uh, oh, I just, oh, I chose not to think about it anymore and, and moved on. It wasn't until years, it wasn't until years later down the track that I would start reflecting upon it. Uh, probably a decade later, I, I started to, you know, oh yeah, I used to work at Seager World, so well, I just moved on with things. But it's in retrospect and uh, reflection. And yes, after she gave me that look that day, that, that disdainful look, I was like, I was like, what the hell was all that about? Oh, oh, oh. I was like, what was that? What the hell was that? And everything uh, was very awkward after that, but very uncomfortable around her after that. But, uh, yes. You know, this whole thing has become exhausting. This did, about four days ago, this uh, was meant to be like a, a six minute reflection, this six minute reminisce about Seagull Sydney. And now I'm exhausted because I kept remembering things and I've been analysing it and, and uh, have developed anxiety over it. In the park, she managed to be polite, and a bit friendly, managed to be. But I could see behind those eyes. And I never felt comfortable around her. And, and yeah, nasty. Well, on that, I'd like, like to say a, a few words about uh, the, uh, a certain person in the park who uh, was a ride operator and spent half his time uh, trying to be a ride supervisor as a bull big bullshitter. You're a big bullshitter. And you know, you know who you are. Uh, you know who you are. You're a big bullshitter. And, and uh, you reckoned, you, you reckoned that you knew certain people and, and, and you didn't know them at all. And, and at the time I was slightly gullible toward your, your stories. And I, uh, I remember I was, a, I was a map zooker and I was with Craig. Craig was a guy, he was from England, he was from London. I've never, never seen Craig since. He, uh, he had a couple of hours of Channel 9 per week. He was trying to get into a Channel 9, he had a couple of hours of them per week. And uh, I was in, had some, I was on a shift at Mad Baz and I was talking about resigning and Craig said, yeah, you've been, you've been carrying that resignation around in your pocket for months. Uh, you're going to do anything about it. And I was like, yeah, and I said, because I've, I've been talking about it, and, and so I walked out up to Ben, up to Ben's, and so Ben was very good to me. Ben was always very good to me, and uh, this video has taken its toll on me, and I'm going to move on, and that's going to make peace with it. That's it, and I'm going to move on. I'm going to make peace with it and move on. Now that's that's it. Get back to what I was doing. This is a, a great diversion to what I was doing before. Yes. And uh, I'm going to move on now. I'm going to move on. Peace. I'm going to... Peace. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Yes. Ben went by, uh, oh, Ben went by the book to a certain degree. Ben, ben was very easy to talk to, and he, uh, 
it was, it was, it was good. It was uh, fair to everyone. Was it? That's, a, that's an inaccurate word. Ben was a uh, good guy. Well, uh, Ben was a, a Queenslander. I, uh, I, I walked up to Ben and I handed it to him. And uh, said, I quit. I quit. And I walked off. He said, oh, wait, 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 pat, pat, pat. He said, pat, pat, pat. Do you know what? It, uh, it, it may not have been Ben that I handed my resignation to. He said, he said, okay, all right. So he said, uh, he said, you realise that if you do this, okay, so you realise that if you do this, and I go downstairs and I make this official, that's it. Like, you, I said, yeah. I said, yep, that's the whole point. I said, I've been carrying this, res I've, I've been carrying this around in my pocket for two months. He said, oh, no, you have. No, you have. I was like, oh, you know, he said, everyone knows you have. And he said, just let you know, if I go downstairs, just, just want you to know this, if I go downstairs, I give it to the guys downstairs, I give it to management, they stamp it, it's official, just to let you know. And I'm like, great, go do it, great, it, Pat, are you totally sure, are you totally sure about this? I said, I quit, you should, uh, yes, and I, yep, okay. So he went downstairs, and he came back up, he said, he said, you've, uh, all right, you've got two weeks left. It was so blurry. The details are so blurry now. I was, I was, I was venturing into my brain. And, 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 and then I had this image of this other supervisor. It may not have been Ben that I handed my resignation to that day. It uh, may have been another, it may have been another supervisor. Uh, who happened to be just floating around just outside of Mad Basque, because they just walk around the place and float around. It is so blurry now and vague. Yes. And Craig said, Ah, oh, you did it, you did it. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and within an, an, an hour of me doing it, everyone in the park knew. I said, Pat resigned, Pat resigned. Pat's got two weeks left, Pat just resigned. Uh, because any time that a full-timer who'd been doing full-time for a while, any time a full-timer was signed, was a big deal. That was a huge big deal. So news raced around the park. It was in the space of about an hour. Everyone said, heard you, heard you quit. Pat resigned. Pat quit. And uh, I felt great relief, but that last two weeks is slow. It goes so slowly. Oh, my gosh. That was slow, but I felt tremendous relief. Then I just moved. Actually, I moved on. I didn't. I actually didn't uh, have any regrets. I just moved on uh, with relief. I didn't. I didn't regret that decision. Moved on, and I didn't think. In fact, I didn't think about Seagull for some time afterwards. Uh, I didn't think about Seagull at all for 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 a while, for quite a long time after that. Oh, and we also had fun at Sigua. At Sigua, we also had, I remember, I remember uh, one particular occasion, there was a rave there of sorts. There was a DJ that came in, and I had an extended shift. Did, uh, I had a shift. I think I stuck around afterwards, but during my actual shift, the place was filled with the rave music. I'm not into techno music, really. I'm, not, I'm, I'm very... I digress. I'm not going to digress. I'm not into rave techno music. I can handle a little bit of it sometimes. This particular this particular night, this DJ came into the park and uh, we were ready for it and so do just and after a while it kinda of becomes a bit hypnotic. And so within a couple of hours we were everyone in the park was just like and, and, and the supervisors the managers and the supervisors on the floor were doing their utmost, were doing their utmost best to not, because all the right all the, everyone, they've all the guests in the park. Everyone was, <laughs> and this went on for hours, and it was very hypnotic. And then, like so I experienced a, a rave, and uh, yeah, yes. So there was. Uh, they had a little bit, a little, little bit of fun there. Too much ball breaking. It was a little bit of fun. <laughs> mm.
very quickly though, very quickly, I had a weakness there. Mo at least 60% of the time at lunch time, what I would do is I, m I made friends with a guy who worked in the arcade. There was, we had a big arcade game section with pole position and the racing cars. And so about 50% of my lunch times, what I would do is, uh, or if I was on a breaker shift, is when you give people breaks, that's a 10 hour shift. But anyway, not as I digress. What I would do, and so what I would do is I'd go over and he'd, and, he'd, and, he'd, and he'd give me free rides on the, the pole position. I greatly enjoyed pole position, the, the racing cars, and you, it was a really good setup, and the car moved, and I used to actually enjoy that. So I actually did enjoy pole position. It was, uh, it was, it was fun. It was good to do. Yes, yes. So, yes. 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 Ball breaker. Dragging. Dragging the heavy chain. Dragging the heavy chains. Dragging the chains. Dragging the chains. I uh, will move on from this now. Gotta be a little behind now. That took up way too much of my time. I'm exhausted. And uh, I'm done, done with it. I'm completely done with it. And uh, I'll move on to what I was doing four weeks ago. And that's it. That's it. Did I tell you what I've been doing some heavy chain dragging the last four weeks or so with all this. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, Indeed, yes, indeed. Exhausted now.